Boys content is some of the best that we get nowadays, but even I have to agree that the homie Dreamcast guy is just gaslighting the Xbox fanboys right now. He's just gaslighting the Xbox fans, and yeah, pa in, in the past few weeks, we have covered all types of news. Yeah, uh, Xbox has, like, really bad news that we covered on the channel. We also covered the bad news surrounding Sony, PlayStation, with the Helldiver situation as well, right? But the homie just doesn't stop, and listen, man, that's just more content for me. Like, this is more content. Dreamcast guy is providing more content for absolutely free in comparison to all the AAA studios out there and even quadruple A studio like Ubisoft. Yeah, you guys not ready for this one? Like the video if you love the salt. Dislike the video if not, but wait for this one. Roll it. What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here. And today we're talking about Xbox because it sounds like they have another massive, expensive L on their hands. <laughs> So this week, Hellblade 2 Senua Saga finally yeah. released and the reviews were kind of negative and kind of positive. Personally, I gave it a 4 out of 10 and I literally wow. fell asleep wow. playing it, but yeah. it seems like from the early- Ah, oh, here, here we go again, guys. Here we go again. Yeah, man. Bum, bum, metrics, the game completely flopped. We're talking selling 1% the numbers of Starfield, and in a lot of measurements, Starfield really wasn't that successful either. <laughs> but let's take a look at the numbers because this is bad for Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, Hi, yeah. I hope you're having a great day. If you could, give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So okay, we're okay. taking a look at a bunch of early concurrent uh -oh. numbers from Steam database. This is essentially telling how many people decided to buy money, how many people actually <laughs> decided to spend cash to buy Tailblade 2 and not just download it from Game Pass. Now, it has less players on its opening weekend of course. than Redfall or Hi-Fi Rush. Now, of course. Truly consider that Redfall. Which, uh, I mean, of course, like if they're gonna put it in Game Pass, like Sick is not gonna buy it. Like simple as that. Sick is not gonna buy it. And I and I understand both sides. Yeah, it would hurt Microsoft as well. It would hurt the revenue. I, I I get that. But of course, like if they're gonna put it on Game Pass, like Sick is not gonna buy the game, right? Like that. Uh, yeah, understandable. No brainer. But okay, let's uh, let's see uh, the homie go off. Let's see. Was a broken dumpster fire that everybody hated. Yeah, and Hi Fi Rush was, bad. was a shadow drop. They literally did zero marketing, and yeah. it is immediately outselling and outplaying Hellboy 2, which yeah, is true. a much bigger, more expensive project that they have been hyping for literally years. Now, this is the article that's referencing, and the numbers of it are kind of baffling, because if you consider it, <laughs> this is something that people expected to at least do all right. The original Hellboy yeah, game came yeah, out yeah. with an 81 on Metacritic, yeah. it became kind of a cult classic. And so when they bought that seven years ago, the studio got acquired by Microsoft, everybody kind of went, okay, how big is Hellboy 2 going to be no. oh. now that you have the trillion dollar budget of Microsoft? and yet it still came out it has the exact same rating it also came out with an 81 but the actual conversation the hype the positivity around this seems to be measurably minor now some people are gonna go this isn't fair maybe the numbers will go up dog like in what universe 81 is considered bad 81 is a good rating oh hell i would even say like if your game gets six out of ten maybe not like buy material or maybe you don't want to buy a 6 out of 10 game understandable but even 6 out of 10 is considered like above average 5 is average 6 is above average 7 is actually pretty decent 8 is very good not every game is going to be 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 like die if you give a game 10 out of 10 you're literally saying there's nothing wrong with the game no bugs okay gameplay 60 fps or maybe even 120 fps 4k with ray tracing and, and it also has that a a a a a a abby zilla getting maybe her cheeks or his cheeks my bad actually Bruh. getting his cheeks pounded in 4k that that's what you're literally saying my guy and, and don't worry xbox andies we also have this as well though yeah so it's equal man we kind of equal right now okay we we get we're getting all of us are getting equal treatment bro <laughs> we getting equal treatment right now man but what let's actually check this like okay here is why I feel like these numbers are extremely worrying and why I pretty much think that at this point, this is proof about the fact that the Game Pass model doesn't work. And additionally, I think it is a sign that just in general, Microsoft is ending up in very hot water to be spending huge chunks of money on so many unsuccessful projects in a row. Like, look at this. In the last 14 months, so from the beginning of last year to current day, they released three major expensive projects. Hi-Fi mm. Rush, Redfall, and Hellblade 2. Yeah. Now, these games all also came sure, to yeah. Steam. So while people could play it, these games, we can tell, definitely bombed because the studios <laughs> got shut down. I'm upset about that. You're upset about that. I've done a bunch of videos. But if these numbers are not enough, if this amount of sales, feedback, player engagement, if this is not enough, 
then this is extremely Holy. bad. No, I, I, I gotta agree on this one. Like, the numbers are looking bad. But are we talking about, like, yeah, this is Steam only, don't get me wrong. But, but Steam is still a good indication. And when you compare some uh, something like 330,000, like, holy crap, 330,000 all-time peak for, for Starfield versus, like, Hellblade 2, yeah, 1%. That's that's insane. Okay, on this one, I do agree. But, but like... Uh, but is this like purchase only or is this like purchase plus game pass i think it's both it's just like the number of uh, people just playing the game whether it's like on game pass uh, or people playing through game pass or people playing uh, uh or people buying the game to play uh, yeah I, I, okay on this one i do have to agree because phil spencer always comes out says oh man no uh, we, we cannot compete with games we cannot compete with sony we, we don't have games or uh yeah whatever game we drop like hey we cannot compete with sony yeah he that's like i said that that that's like i really did say that like holy crap w what are we doing here a and hellblade uh Hel no uh, yeah hellblade 2 is one of those games that they didn't necessarily market so a lot of people did see this coming right like we talked about it like a couple of weeks ago that like they, they only dropped one image uh, of the game something that we had previously even like guys like cold eastwood one of the biggest xbox fanboy youtuber out there nothing wrong with that i mean you do you it's just gaming and plastics at the end of the day dog but even like point is like even he is somebody that had lunch with phil spencer and aaron greenberg somebody who never talks any negative never never like just he's in a la la land right just like how dreamcast guy is always in a la la land with playstation never talks anything bad about playstation at least that's how it feels like with him and uh, and all also Cole Eastwood, even Cole Eastwood was like, bro, like y'all suckers need to market the game, bro. Like what, what y'all suckers doing right now, right? And, and this is what happens when you don't market the game. So Xbox literally just abandoned the game before it even, even came out, bro. This completely blows my mind. This is uh, Starfield when it came out on Steam. The highest peak it had was 330,000 players. The peak for Sinua Saga was about 4K. <laughs> oh my God, that is a 99% drop in players. 99% oh, lower than their last big game. These are oh, all man. just massive failures. But the fact that help Listen, man. Yeah, like a week or two weeks ago when we were getting like so much like bad news about Xbox, I understood that. Like a lot of people were like on the homie's ass, but I was like, guys, like it's just his birthday, man. It's just his birthday, bro. It, it, guys, listen, man. And, and yeah, it was his birthday. So it felt like that, like a birthday present. It felt like a birthday present. It really felt like that he received like a massive just like birthday gift straight from Microsoft as well, right? So yeah, I wasn't like too mad with it. Like because the news was kind of bad and everybody was covering it. I was covering it. You were talking about it. You were covering it as well. And you know what? We had that gaming drama, right? And we had that right after the 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 uh, the, the Helldivers 2 situation, right? Because, like, everybody was like, bro, Microsoft, please don't F up. Sony's effing up big time. Don't F up. But Microsoft was like, hold my beer, son. Hold my beer, son. Baby need to get some of that negative attention, too. And they got all of that. And uh, the homie and everybody, everybody, like, made videos on it, right? Rightfully so. Because that was the news. Th this is the news, right? But now, it's like, we're seeing the homie, like, literally gaslight. I understand this. Yes, I understand this. But, but he gaslighting, though. He... He gets he gaslighting though. I got no problem with it though. It's just free content for all of us, right? I love the salt. Like the video if you love the salt though. Blade is literally half of Hi-Fi Rush. Half of Redfall is absolutely oh insane to me. Now additionally 31 people playing Redfall. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. I think it's that Microsoft is finding themselves in this weird spot where they bought a bunch of studios and then just expected that to be a huge spike in Game Pass numbers. Clearly, this was an expensive gamble they made years ago. Clearly, the concept was like, okay, if we come out with four or five games a year, some of them good, some of them bad, people will keep subscribing to Game Pass. We'll get tens of millions of people paying into the service, which will retroactively fund these projects. Yeah, but yeah, clearly, yeah. that's not paying off. Now, <laughs> Microsoft is probably going to release some statement here in the next couple days that, oh, we're so happy with the success of Hellblade, do not believe their lies. They said that about Redfall, Phil Spencer directly said he wasn't going to shut down Arcane. He straight up said, we're not shutting down Arcane, and we're, we're going to find a way to, to fix Redfall and keep them working. That was a... This... Oh no. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna say that was a lie. That was a lie. Lies. Uh, so they actually said that uh, back on June 2023. Now, listen, I understand. Like, yeah, Phil Spencer has been lying, right? That That's what these execs do uh, at Sony as well. 
And uh, uh, yeah, Phil Spencer has been lying too. Jim Line Crying Ryan is a nickname given from the Xbox Andes and the Xbox fanboys to PlayStation. But yeah, Phil Spencer is also lying. Like, listen, man. Yeah, tough love. Welcome to the real world. Uh, these seconds don't care. Corporations don't care, man. PlayStation don't care about you. Xbox don't care about you, man. I, I think this is good for the fanboys. I, I think fanboys need to hear this. From both sides, absolutely. Nothing wrong in being a fan of Xbox or preferring Xbox over PlayStation or preferring PlayStation over Xbox. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, both of them are console devices. Uh, and banter is cool as well. I, I find banter hilarious, but but like, but the homie's just gaslighting right now. Like, <laughs> he, he, he enjoys it. I guess he enjoys it. I guess he enjoys it. A lie. That was yeah. a direct, bold-faced lie. Then they said the same thing. Hi-Fi Rush was a success by all our metrics. That was also a complete lie. Mm. I am annoyed because right now a lot of people are trying to believe the propaganda. A Xbox is saying, oh, we're not going to shut down Ninja Theory. We have another project already in the works. Don't believe it. Like, like there was a major leak last week that I didn't even report, <sighs> uh, report on that apparently, oh, they just... Oh, oh, here we go again. Yeah, only... Yep, yeah, that was perhaps the only video that you forgot to make, man. Maybe that's what it was because the second there is bad news, I'm gonna make a bad... <laughs> I'm gonna make a bad news video. Man, this is gaming in a nutshell right now. Like, yeah, I, I'm like noticing. I have noticed this for a while. You guys probably noticed this for a long time. It's like, whenever there's bad news, <laughs> seconds just jump on to make the news videos, uh, bad news videos. I'm guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. But, but, and I understand it though. Because seconds click on those videos. Seconds only want to click on the bad news videos. And the opposite argument to this here is that i'm gonna like literally shut down my my first argument the other argument i'm gonna contradict myself real quick uh, and it's quite true though because right now we're only having bad news though right like we're only getting bad news yeah there's a little bit of good news and whenever there is we're covering it for example black Ops 6 yeah a lot of people are very very pessimistic about call of duty right now because of the past activision history and the past call of duty games being bad genuinely but black Ops 6 is having good news right now and, and, and I absolutely agree with you, like Call of Duty in this stage or around this time of the year, every year, always has good news. Always, but except for last year with Modern Warfare 2023, last year around this time it was absolutely negative and pessimism everywhere because we heard that it was supposed to be a DLC, but they're turning that into a full game and gonna charge people $70 for remaster maps from the old Modern Warfare 2, right? So of course a lot of people were mad, upset with that, absolutely, but minus that year, Every year around this time, everybody's like always excited. Every, every we get like good news about it, but this time we truly are getting like good news for Black Ops Six, which I have been covering on the channel. Hopefully the game lives up to it. I'm not like crazy hyped this time. I'm intrigued. I'm curious to see how it's gonna be because Modern Warfare 2023 is the first Call of Duty game that I actually skipped on ever since I got into Call of Duty, which was uh, all, all the way back in Black Ops One. I purchased that game and I went back and purchased all the rest of the Call of Duty games. So I'm a I'm a big Call of Duty fan. I bought, I bought and played every single Call of Duty game except for Modern Warfare 2023. Cannot even believe it that I actually didn't buy. And I was saying that uh, come December or or January, February, if we uh, have good amount of content and if uh, the reception is positive, I'm gonna get the game. But but like, I, I had literally no motivation and no incentive. But this time, the the marketing is looking good. But aside from that what else is there to talk about right that is positive there's nothing uh, yeah gta 6 maybe perhaps but you guys know that game is coming out next year and already a lot of people are like hey bro that game is gonna be woke as well maybe uh, hopefully not hopefully hopefully not but but yeah there's that as well it, it just never stops man it just never stops greenlit hellblade 3 so ninja theory is definitely safe look it, here's my thing Xbox will say whatever. Xbox will leak stuff. Xbox will get positive spin out there. But at this point, until the games exist, I think every studio is on the verge of being shutting down. And to me, that sucks. So many of these developers are going to be on pins and needles, constantly yeah. looking for better jobs. If you are a talented true, developer, why would you ever stay at Microsoft working in conditions where at any point, if some guy up at the top of freaking Microsoft chooses to cut your job, it just gets cut. Now, a couple days ago, I did report on those very yeah, loosey-goosey yeah. rumors that Microsoft wants to buy Valve. Now, yeah, loosey-goosey. 
I mean, like, okay, the rumor was loosey-goosey, but the video that you made wasn't so loosey-goosey, my bruh. Well, there was some leaked reporting that they were trying to do it years ago, and they were unsuccessful, but a lot of people are basically saying, look, in general, Xbox is trying to just buy their way to success, <sighs> and they've been doing this for 10 years. Acquire, acquire, yeah. acquire. Which mm -hmm. was them essentially trying to say, okay, if we own a huge chunk of the entire gaming market, eventually we have to be profitable, right? And, and on this news, like, a lot, of course, like, it's a rumor, it's a leak, doesn't mean it's gonna happen. But on, on this specific news, a lot of people came together. I even seen, like, Xbox fanboys saying that, bruh, like, nah, bro, Microsoft, don't buy it. Some of the blind fanboys, they're still like, yeah, bro, Microsoft needs to buy Valve. They need to buy Valve. They need to buy, they need to buy GTS 6. They need to buy Sony. And I'm sitting here, listen, man. I'm like, bruh, like, y'all suckers need, just, just buy Sony, bro. Just buy Sony, end it all, Microsoft. Just end it all, bro. And the fanboys suffering. <laughs> and the fanboys suffering. And everything, bruh. And everything. Yo, Phil Spencer, where are you at, bro? Just buy everything, bro. You suckers need to buy... Yeah, you suckers gonna buy everything and then ruin it. And, and that's a fact, bro. Like, and I'm not, not saying that from a fanboy perspective. That, that's literally, objectively speaking, like, so far... Not trying to take the homie Dreamcast guy's side because he is gaslighting. Yeah, don't. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He's gaslighting. He, he, it was his birthday, but now he's just like gaslighting. <laughs> he's just gaslighting. And I'm going to be 100% real with you. Like, I, I love the salty content. I love the salty content, okay? It, it, yeah, bro. I love the salty content from both sides. From both sides. We also have uh, uh, d done videos on Dirt Griggity as well. He's one of the biggest Xbox fanboy YouTuber that I enjoy. And uh, he's one of the biggest PlayStation fanboy that I also enjoy. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'd be what it'd be, man. But, but like, yeah, on this one, it's like, dog, Xbox, they buy everybody and then they start shutting down. Could you imagine, like, buying Bethesda and then shutting down some of their studios? Like, holy crap, that's what they did. You know that if uh, Xbox never bought Bethesda or at least those studios, they might have still been alive right now. You know, they might have been still working on their games. They might have been taking their time. They might have been, like, dropping and coming out with their games and all that. But nah, bro, like, Phil Spencer was like... He's like, nah, Brad, Yalsuk is getting fired today, though. I, I don't think by that's Sony, the case. By Sony. The biggest issue is that, honestly, Game Pass is trying to fit into such a scattershot approach. Like, look at this. These okay. are all the games that got added to Xbox Game Pass this month. Now, some of these are great. You can see, like, here's the most popular games on Xbox mm. PC. Uh, Freaking Minecraft, that makes sense. Diablo 4, that's great. By the way, Diablo 4 is new season. I ain't make a video of it, but I've been playing the new season a lot. Sea of Thieves. But look at this. Here are the games they just added. Uh, In I, I mean, you're busy making uh, videos about another Xbox flop. Hellblade 2 is already screwed. Uh, so, yeah, makes sense. Indie game, uh, little kid game, indie game I've never heard of, indie game I've never yeah. heard of, indie game I've never heard of, Hellblade, and then a game that undoubtedly everybody says is absolute dog trash. So, <laughs> my point there is that we're in a spot where oh anything that God. Microsoft tries to do, it needs to try and change its functionality. Microsoft is trying to treat Xbox Game Pass as this infinite money printer. And that's, the way, not, that's just not the way that these things operate. They need to start to think about this more like Netflix. Netflix creates tons and tons and tons of stuff for uh, very expensive prices, very cheap prices. But the point is that they're scattershotting their approach. It's huge budget thing, little kid thing, different documentary. And this is what ends up paying it back. It's that Microsoft is trying to make back-to-back Sony-sized projects. Huge $100 million, $200 million games, hoping it pays off eventually with enough... Uh, from a gamer standpoint, like, listen, I, I would say Game Pass is a very good model. Uh, from a gamer standpoint, and, and, and from a gamer that want to play, like, hundreds of games, very good... Uh, a very good game pass is good but if you're somebody that's only gonna play one or two game then yeah it's better that you just buy the game and not buy game pass but if you're someone that that want to play like hundreds and hundreds of games then game pass is a very good service now for sure it's a very good service and numbers came out and apparently it, it's not good for microsoft they're gonna they're losing money with that the uh activision so far is the only one they bought it and it hasn't even been a single uh, hasn't even been a year but so far activision blizzard is the one that is making them a ton of money right now so that the yeah i do agree and it's not that i agree it's that i i yeah, that's the news, apparently. Like, it's not even in my opinion. That's the news that my Microsoft is losing money. So they're not making the money that they uh, wanted to make. So, uh, and Activision is the one that's making them a ton of money right now. So Activision, buying Activision was very, very good for them. Hopefully, they're not going to shut down a studio uh, in a year or two years from now if uh, one game turns out to be bad or something, right? 
but 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 yeah i i i suppose like they really need to double the numbers of game pass in the next couple years if they don't then yeah it's gonna look bad uh in terms of making money with game pass for them as a gamer oh shit like it's a good model though for a gamer it's good subscribers and it doesn't work do you know how these companies measure success of subscription models they count it by the number of new subscribers so it's not just enough that the game sells it needs to bump up the concurrent numbers you know the fallout tv show that was incredibly good amazon considers that a success because people subscribed to the service to watch that show mm. how many people are actually subscribing to xbox game pass oh. the raw numbers by their own financial reports are very low okay. it's in a spot now where honestly the fact that they're still trying to dump more and more money in this. Guys, check out this video on the screen because apparently Black Ops 6 gameplay leaks are going around and we're hearing that it's also going to be having the September 2001 mission. Yay! Check out this video on the screen. Uh, on the left though, we're going to put like another fanboy video as well. Another salty fanboy video. Check out both of these videos and I'll see you right there, my man.